Oh shit! Hello! Hey! Ah! Ah damn! Um, hello! Um, welcome! 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 Oh shit! Ah damn! Welcome guys! Welcome! Welcome! How y'all guys doing? So you're probably wondering, why are you recording, Mac? Well, I think I gotta give a reason for that. There's some of you out there that probably don't know what the fuck is Gamer Grudge? Or better yet, what happened in season seven? Well guys, that's what we're here to do. We're here to show you what exactly happened in season eight of Gamer Season Seven of Gamer Grudge. So that way when you go to season eight, you know what the fuck we're doing. I hope. But anyway, guys, we're gonna tell you exactly what happened. And we're gonna go into different increments and I'm probably gonna sprinkle in this is probably the only time you're gonna see the live right now because I'm not gonna be on camera anymore, if I'm telling you right now but you'll probably see some snippet of me just typing shit because that's what I'm doing because guys I'm lazy guys I got I got stuff to do people I mean look look I'm literally disorganized I mean, look look oh shit I mean yeah that's it that's just the way I am I'm disorganized you know, but anyway um here's the exactly what happened in season eight, season seven of Gamer Grudge? Because you need to know. This is the part where I roll the clip. Roll the clip. And we'll listen to you. Um. Anyway, what's up, everybody? Hello, hi, how's it going? It's time for some Gamer Grudge, people. Gamer Grudge, you know the show that we do? Oh, it's season seven, and we're here, people. How's it going? All right, guys, the rules are as follows. There are four rounds with, uh, there are one more round with one question per round. The point is awarded to the person with the best argument, people. The best argument, not the best answer, the best argument. The two fighters with the most points will will um, will advance to the PVP. Now we have eliminated this. Is the if the if you have three points towards the end, then you automatically win. But if you were if we get to there and there's two and two, you go to the PVP as a tiebreaker. You know, blah blah blah. But if you have three points by the end of the four question, you won. But and we'll just do the last question. That's just a fun round. All right, in the in, in the age of retire, we got rid of this. That's now PVP. All right, now today's this. I got my phases loaded up. I can do this part. All right, yay! Okay, here are the phases, folks. We have five different phases. Phase one is the introduction, where you guys will just simply state your answer, nothing more and nothing less. Phase two is your declaration, where you each have three minutes to make your argument. Phase three is the grudge. It is five minutes and it's a free for all. We want to see blood. We want to see you tear each other's arguments apart. We want to see shreds. And phase four is the last minute where the judge will ask one question and you guys have one minute to answer again. And then phase five is our cleanup where we do our fact checking and we will give you guys our verdict on who won that round. All right, cool. All right. Nice job, Miss Fat Checker. Not Fat Checker. Um, damn it. That's Zach. Um, I don't want to call you back to check this time. I don't know how much we're going to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with what I do know, but I might be... I'm opening okay. myself up okay. to get beat up. Uh, but is it, uh, Genova? Mm -hmm. Ain't she them? Well, Ain't yeah, she out here creating... creating havoc? That's not a good question. Mama's... Mama's... She's the source mm -hmm. of all the power that, that the soldiers have. So, yeah, she's a. So, she Wolverine, tell me. She yeah. out. Yes! I got this. Is that who you picked, Pam? Is that, is that, is that correct? That, okay, is, okay. that is correct. That is correct. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that you, you know that's correct. I, I just want to know, everybody honest, that is Desmond Miles as Spider Man. Okay, so, uh, Dragon, what is your answer? Uh, Evie Fry or Evie Fry from um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. 
Okay, cool. Is that your answer? That's your answer, right? Yeah, that's my answer. Why did you give her such a big head? Huge. <laughs> no, 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 that's not me. That's. I said Mac. Oh, Mac. I think so. I hate that her names are so similar. You know that my Photoshop jobs are much better. But that's what makes it funny. She, she looks like a vinyl pop figure. She looks like she just got into the big head code and gold and, uh, 9007. Yeah, that's not a. I, I don't not a final part. Like you look like you shake like you look like you shake her enough and her head's just gonna go whoa. <laughs> You're thinking of a bobblehead. <laughs> That's pop figure bobblehead, I got I got both. Funko pop. Funko pop. Yeah, uh, you, know, you know the bane of the, the universe. Yeah, I'm right. more. Alright, right, so um last but not least, Andrea, what is your answer? Leon from Resident Evil. Is that your answer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. It went with perspective. Um, you, what you will get for this is experience the action through the eyes of the protagonist. Um, it will also share the first-person shooter will share um, traits with other shooter games. Um, <laughs> you will be able to run around and absolutely obliterate other guys. Imagine pew 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 pew. Um, what better thing than absolutely blowing people up? Um, you know, throw grenades, fire your guns, get your shields out. Our game, and in it, there was a child who also had a headset on, and I was able to talk to them, and they t expressed how much they loved this game called Job Simulator in VR. And they could not even, they were like, you have to try this game. It's so relaxing. It's a really fun game. You said a child thought a uh, job was relaxing. Yes, they love the job simulator game. He's like, you could be any job you you want and blah, 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 blah. And I was talking to him about that. And I was like, actually, that sounds kind of fun. That sounds kind of relaxing. You know what sounds fun to me? Running from zombies in first person, firing a gun in first person, crafting weapons, using stealth, having intimate relations with people. Um, understanding so people who uh, die that's okay uh, because also, that's like real life it's in also, a virtual reality that sounds also, uh, fun and also, engaging also, maybe afterwards i'd have i'd become a better person after going through the trial you know the trouble and all the heartache maybe i would have like a good story and i would like you know feel different about the characters than i did when i started off also You're not um, getting that when you also, with, burdens, but. also with your um games with your game killer i mean Look, um, Outlast VR exists, and that is a Wait, thing. And that is, Outlast VR exists, and that is a fucking scary game. Compared to that, that is nothing compared to that game. That is a terrifying fucking game. So Outlast is terrifying. Compared really to like, that. People go to like haunted houses. That's like first person, let me scare you type of thing. That's a total market for that. Yeah, and yeah. And, like, that'd be know, awesome. It was to be, actually, to be yeah, like crouched down behind the thing, had to throw a bottle to like distract the motherfucker and then shoot right. a dog or something. Even, that was even really in, fun. Yeah, and even in, in Outlast, you're at a disadvantage. You have nothing but your fucking camera. Yeah, and in your yeah. game, you at least got a gun. You can at least take somebody and you can strangle somebody. I yes, ma'am. Your burger today came out to 824. Here's your chain. But, but here's the thing with your game show. I feel like your game, yeah, there is a market for people that loves that game. People do love that game. Mind, mind you, it's not for you, but there's a lot of people that love that game. The worst game. Yeah, it's not the game. Yeah, it's not the worst game. Yeah, it's the worst game. That's literally like one step off of the training that you take to do the job. You're literally doing a training video that's going to teach you how to cook the same thing that you want in the restaurant. Well, I mean, if you want to get technical with people, there's maybe people, if you want to get technical with people, I mean, I know this is going to be all of us feel exactly what you're doing. Shots, 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 shots,
experience. Yeah, you. Two you. options you. are fight and run against zombies and go through a haunted house type of thing and have no, 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 or have an RPG and combat against no, monsters no, 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 with my friends no, no, across no, no, the world. Those two experiences sound more really exciting no, 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 and not no, 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 no. as bad as no, flipping you burgers, bro. You are not just flipping burgers and all that. You actually get to see the dude. You're right. I mean, you can add, you can add, you can add. I'm filling up the soda. You're right. I'm you do know if they take your game, they're going to remix it a little bit to where you actually can see the stuff made, see the stuff done. They probably going to give you different experiences and different things in your game. They're going to upgrade your Smoothie game. Smoothie, thank you. They're going to upgrade your game entirely. Here's your smoothie. That's, thank the, you thing, that's again. the thing about your game. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, you ready? <laughs> All right, y'all got five minutes. Um, I'm gonna ring the bell. You may go at it. Starting now. I just have a question about Sonic. So yeah, he's a great character. He's iconic. Everybody knows Sonic. But is it just because he's well known that he's the best? Like, what makes Sonic special? Like. Then Mario, and then Link, and that other well-known video game characters. Why is he a great mascot? Um, as I said in my argument at the start, so from 1985, Nintendo held the market. Sega wanted something that would rival that, and they did it. Not not just not just by one time, but they was out selling two to one. This has never been done. Nintendo had never seen a rival like this. So it isn't just about Sonic the Hedgehog, the game, the character. It's about what he did for that franchise. He put Sega back on the map. You spoke about Rob being a, a Trojan horse and you know really the driving force behind you know a marketing ploy. A marketing ploy, um, and that is he. Yeah, he did, he did a good job um, in terms of what you were saying. But this is exactly what Sonic did. He came in. He overtook the market. Um, I think he's sold over 140 million um, copies of various different games, uh, you know, so somewhere along that line. He's still running strong today. As opposed yeah, he's to a great character and a great singular game, but he doesn't stand for any other game besides Sonic the Hedgehog. Unless you play Wii Mario Olympics. He stands for Sega. He brought Sega to the forefront. I mean, I'm just going to go straight in for the killer here. Back in your argument, you said that a survey was taken place as to why people um, decided to start buying Nintendo again. Um, you know, that survey was conducted through 200 people. It's not real. Oh, it's conducted all through New York City. They only released Rob in New York City, which was the biggest city and the biggest market. And that's in where they In January 1986, to... an independent research firm commissioned by Nintendo delivered a survey of 200 NES owners. Showing the most popular reason given for buying an NES was because children wanted the robot. It was conducted oh, but by 200 people. That you're was it. you're looking at the age ranges. Yes, children seven to eleven will report that. Adults yes, say their by, child asked it for it. People who ask their child why they asked for it was because it had a robot. You can't claim that this this was a, a great thing. It came with two games. They stopped giving it. They stopped giving it updates. Um, Exactly, because it wasn't supposed to have updates. Rob it wasn't, wasn't supposed selling. To, it couldn't do Rob was it. not supposed to sell. It was supposed to get Nintendo back on the shelf, which it did. Nintendo was yes, already, Sonic Nintendo came was later, and Sonic did a great game. job. No, but Nintendo was already Rob got the the Nintendo game. back on the Nintendo, shelf. Nintendo, Nintendo was already winning the war on video games. They didn't it was not. It could have do done it. It could have done it, but in less <coughs> time. Rob made it a short time span. They did it in three years. A short time span. Yes. It had two games issued with it the whole time. The, the whole point was to just get people, because computers were coming out, people could play video games on their computers, so they weren't buying game consoles. Rob was to get Nintendo many, out of the game video okay. game genre so, so and onto the game genre. If it was to get it out of the video game shelf. genre, if it was to get it out of the video game genre and on the shelf, how many did it sell? Um, after the first two years, I think four million. Sold four million yeah, in two actually, years. Yes, or, yes, yes, it was very successful. Nintendo started selling four million consoles by 1988, I think. No, for what? For, no, 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 no. How many robots did it sell? Not consoles. Oh, how many robots did not sell? Robots did not sell, but people started saying, and 98% of those people. So 
So, so hold on. Well, well, well. 98% of people told the survey company, whoever took the survey, I don't have the name of it, I'm sorry, that they recommended it to their friends and family. Ninety-eight percent of people told the survey company. Of 200 people. 98 percent of 200 people. That is That's how many people took percentage. that test. Look at the statistics. But you didn't count it that enhances the game, makes it better, and not only delivers on the things that were promised, but sets you up for the future is best. And that's my vote. That's how I feel about it. Okay, but the, in The Last of Us, one of the most beautiful things is the humanity aspect of it. And so to have a DLC where you are learning more about the main character, when the second game came out, knowing where she originated from it just it helps to flesh out her character even more than it that's really the same was. thing in destiny like knowing that Cade had a dare to get the vanguard and then you he, he dies in the game and then after that you have to go through all these steps and these quests when he has audio dialogue telling people that he knows that hey if you killed me you have to be the new hunter vanguard there's no hunter vanguard now the person that killed him is ardrin who now became a guardian, which means he's going to be the next Hunter Vanguard. The, the story is expansive and goes across multiple expansions and multiple timelines. Where I feel like your DLC just deals with what happened before, like like a like 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 a recap, or if um, it's not a recap because it wasn't like, it wasn't like, informed uh, like, before. Uh, like, the, a, like a final, game. like a Fast and Furious movie where yeah, I didn't see the last one, but I kind of know what happened anyways. Like was no, it, this is more was your prior. DLC so essential? to the world building of the game that you could not have had the second game without your DLC. That's well, my argument. That's because the second game not was have shit before the DLC. Fair enough. There couldn't have been Shadow <laughs> Keep, there couldn't have been Beyond Light, and there would not be a Destiny 2 free to play right now if it wasn't for Forsaken saving the franchise. That's the gravity okay. and the levity of the situation I'm bringing. Is that without Forsaken, Destiny, a, two, uh, like a, a super expensive franchise, would be no more. Bungie wouldn't have bought it, been able to buy it from Activision. And honestly, if it hadn't have been from Activision, dumping all the crap they wanted on Bungie and making them put on these Michael transactions to store the Eververse and all this crap, it would have been an issue in the first place. Like, a DLC should, to be the best ever, has to deliver something more than just more goodness of the same. More of the same good stuff. Like, I get it. Last of Us is cool. I played Last of Us 2. I mean, I, I really don't know how, like, Joel was kind of like Abby's gameplay for me, and then uh, uh, Ellie, she felt the same. She, you know what I mean? She had some new moves, but it's been five or six years when we're talking about age, so for story-wise, it made sense. It's, it's a good franchise, yeah. but greatness is what we're on the brink of when we talk about Forsaken, and that's what it was. Like, to balance PvE and PvP is insane to do in a first-person shooter. No one has done it yet. No one has done it since, and no one does it better. Story mode, like I said with The Last of Us, I get it. It's good. It's a good story. It's a good. It's a good tale, father daughter. But it's kind of a hee haw, yee haw ass shit that we've seen before. You know what I'm saying? We've seen this story before. We've seen it play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about this versus the flat rate shipping box. I'm gonna send this to you. Season seven, so three and a half years. 